Hi, my name is Linda. And just about a few days ago, I have suddenly realized that half of the 2020 has already passed. <sighs> Time flies. So, how does everybody think of it? Exciting, terrible, or just a chaotic mess? Well, I have to admit that it is the craziest half year I have ever experienced in my entire life. And there are so many things happened in the past six months, also right now in the world. In this period of time, as an individual, I literally didn't do anything particularly meaningful, which can cause really huge influences either on myself or the society or the world. And I think most of us didn't. But as a micro part of the mankind, we've already witnessed so many major historical events happening in the whole world. And almost each of them brings either big or small impacts to your daily life. During the quarantine, I've always dreamed about going back to school. As a teenager, I'm desired to meet my classmates, my friends, and to hang out with them every lunch break all the way to McDonald's instead of sitting in front of my laptop every day doing an enormous amount of homework without going anywhere. So now you probably can imagine how excited I was on the first day of school. And dramatically, as you also can imagine what's going to happen next is that I was super disappointed. Well, the blame is partly on me because I had certain fluids about the strict rules of the school. And I kept, long story in short, I kept very high expectations for everything, which is going back to normal, but just they happened all in my mind. And then the reality pushed me into the deep abyss of disappointment. Everybody are strictly asked to stay 1.5 meter away from each other. I know that's for security, that's for health, but that extra sense of alienation between people just doesn't feel good at all. And suddenly the distance learning becomes part of our lives. It's no longer an optional choice. And although the school reopens, it still stays in the system. It made all of us panicking for a little bit at the start of the quarantine. And these are just two of the thousand reasons and why I feel disappointed. So right now you probably ask Linda, what are you going to talk about? Well, what are we facing right here? Everything seems to be entirely different from a few months ago. Or let's say just let's just focus on this major issue which is happening in the world right now, everywhere, anytime. The changes. So obviously the changes of the school comparing to this change in the world is just a drop in the ocean. You know, during quarantine everyone is super bored, including me. So yesterday I was surfing on Google and I accidentally saw one post which surprises me so much and triggers my curiosity. There are a total of 26 main shocking worldwide events happened or happening right now in the world and some of them for some people probably has never ever happened in their entire life and a whole bunch of stuff just gathered together and gave us a huge pump in the head including George Floyd, Corona pandemic, Brexit, bushfire, everything proves enough evidence to tell us that the world is no longer normal as what it was before. And we can easily see that the world is right now developing rapidly in a super dynamic way. It seems like nobody can predict what's going to happen, what unexpected and unanticipated things which are going to happen in the next second. Perhaps the disasters we are facing right now is, are going to be normalized. And it's mankind. We have to adapt and try to live in the threats and the nightmares. And this is definitely the situation that doesn't want to be seen in the future. And that makes me think about this, start to think about these types of issues. So as a teenager who has just moved to NL last year, also takes part as a huge change in my life. I really would like to share about my own opinion about how to face the changes in the world and to deal with any changes which are going to happen on us in the future. First of all, I realized that while the changes are coming, we need to be fully prepared instead of following the public blindly and panicking without any further ado. We have to firstly make sure that what kind of situation are we exactly dealing with? What's the pro? What's the con? What can we do for it? What do we need to be cautious of? Therefore, my first point is to do some research due to the changing events. 
to live in the moment and to avoid the confusion. Normally, the news always should take the first priority because it always stands on the most objective view of the whole event and brings us to the closest place of the truth. But as teenagers, I know that most of us will choose to use the internet as the searching tool where you can really hear different ideas and can get inspired easier. During researching, we always receive a huge amount of different messages depends on one event. We can always see that there are a lot of different voices and opinions based on the statement, and each of the message can probably inspire one's idea and to delight one's mind. This always makes me to learn to observe one thing by standing on different perspectives. While I was doing my research of the coronavirus, I saw an image with a, of a sign with a sentence above it. It said, Corona is the cure, and the mankind is virus. I was confused at the first second and wondering what does it mean, and suddenly I got so clear in my mind, and I found that although the virus causes enormous and negative impacts on mankind, but it was just for mankind. And the result of the lockdown is the great improvements of the global environment, and I was so shocked to see the significant improvements of the air and water quality in China before and during the virus. Also, not just China, including India, USA, UK, everywhere in the world. And I simply realized that in this case, it seems like the corona is the real cure to the natural environment and mankind is the one who continuously causes all kinds of damage to the world, which can be properly defined as the virus. After a while, I even feel a little guilty about it. And I immediately and I immediately thought that the coronavirus seems not as evil as we thought that it should be. It solves the major environmental problem that humanity is keep on struggling for years. And this is indeed a great example for standing on a different perspective for observing and analyzing an event. From thinking in different ways, we can always have introspections on our own life values. Yeah, it is always the same with lives. Sometimes we still feel stuck in our mind. Just think out of the box. Try to walk another way. Maybe you will see the most beautiful view. Now, let's zoom out a little bit and focus on the word of research. For applying the changes, what we should not ignore is that the platform that we are using for doing the research is on the internet. And internet is not just the stuff which can inspire you it's easily, and it is a place where everybody can say anything right there. So while surfing online, we will absolutely 100% see different opinions and views from strangers. These people have different backgrounds and came from different families, different countries, therefore their education levels can also be distinct. As a result, if you see anyone who has a totally opposite idea as you do, don't be rushed and aggressively hitting your keyboard and argue back. It is tiring to do this one by one and it's not really meaningful. The best way to do is to keep an open mind to all the information, which means that we look at all the comments in an objective view and to try to extract the information from the messages we see on the internet and can reflect the subjective components on ourselves during the process of demonstrating our own moral principle. And these messages should always be the factors. Also, the topics we are mainly discussing about are these kind of tough topics. So there's no really index of right or wrong. So why don't we just not to be too offensive? keep our, our uh, attitude humble and respectful, and ultimately focus on the research results that we're all the time looking for. Well, with our sufficient research results, let's right now focus on the word, the changes. Despite all kinds of natural hazards, I believe that most of the changes in the world are man-made, including the man-made technologies right now leading the world to a much brighter place. On the other hand, man-made pollution is also causing all kinds of hazards and pollutions. And no matter positive or negative, they're all led by the individuals. So, as the leader of the future, only knowing and understanding the situation is far not enough for being a person who makes the change to the world. In my view, a positive change leader should include a strong and complete personality who has the right value to the society and to the world. This is just the first level. 
to become a positive and complete human being. Then, for achieving the goal and to apply the changes, the leader should possess creativity, execution, motivation, planning ability, and perseverance and full understanding to the society and the world. This makes him or her to become a superior human being. I remember there is a quote which quite inspires me a lot about the theory of leadership from Martin Luther King. A genuine leader is not a searcher for consensus, but a motor of consensus, which can also be understood as a leader should have the ability to motivate people and being able to understand that each single human being has its own potential ability on different things. Also, in my opinion, the leader needs to have ambitions, dreams for motivating itself and the followers in order to reach the point for being molder of consensus. And with all the features which I mentioned below, a change leader is being shaped, and that's what I expect to happen in the future. Well, as we all know, that changes never stop, and it's probably the only stuff that never stop in the universe. Like what Heraclitus said, everything is constantly shifting, changing, and becoming something other to what it was before. Well, for example, try to imagine the previous second was twenty sixth of June, twenty twenty four p.m. the twelfth minute and the twenty second. But have you ever thought about it? That this moment can only appear once in the whole universe. And a while later, it is already not that second in- anymore, or not these seconds anymore. And that's how the changes push the time, push the universe, and push all the life matters keep on going. We live in the changes, but because they're so tiny that we can barely notice. Meanwhile, when the real and shocking changes are coming, and human notice that, we must be prepared and fighting for the unknown future. Well, it only takes the step of three: think out of the box, live in the moment. And take the steering wheel of the future. Thank you.